Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, VCDX257 from virtualelephant.com. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my VCDX presentation so that you can see the critical components that you need to include in your own presentation as you prepare for the VCDX defense. Let's get started. All right. For this video, I'm going to actually be showing the slides that I used for my VCDX design defense back in 2017. So while the design is a bit older, I still feel that this will add value to you as a candidate today in 2023 as you prepare for your VCDX defense. So first, I want to go over a couple things before I start sharing the slides. First, there is no right or wrong answer. You need to prepare the slides in a way that make you feel comfortable and in a manner that you feel you'll be able to communicate and articulate your design to the panelists and be able to highlight the key aspects of the VCDX blueprint for the track that you're going for. Now, I went for the VCDX DCV or data center virtualization track. So I was very much focused on the traditional vSphere, vCenter, storage, and uh, even NSX in my own design. Um, and it is important to remember, and I've said this during many of the workshops and other uh, conversations that I've had, is that if you put something in your design documentation, so say, for example, like myself, I included NSXV at the time inside of my DCV design, that makes it fair game for the panelists. And while there might not be specific items that require you from a scoring perspective, to have included D, uh, NSX inside of your design because it's actually not part of the blueprint, the fact that you've put it there enables and allows the panelists to be able to ask you questions on it. So you need to make sure that you're well-versed with everything within your design that you've created, that you can speak to it intelligently and be able to communicate why you did what you did with those components. So now as I was preparing my VCDX presentation, I was going through a lot of different types of presentation training and public speaking training um, because as part of my role at the time, I was doing a lot of executive briefings and so forth. And so one of the things that I got trained on was the Mandel method, which is called SIPAB. And that stands for situation, complication, impl implication, position, action, and benefit, S-C-I-P-A-B. And now one of the things that this let me do was think through each and every slide that I was putting together. So the first tip that I would give you is to leverage the speaker notes within your PowerPoint presentation. I used my speaker notes to include the SIPAB model within each one, and this helped drive the talking points that I was going to have for that slide. Tip number two is to have an index slide. And this index slide should be able to be hot linked to all of the other slides that you have within your presentation to allow you to be able to quickly go back and forth between slides as you are answering questions by the VCDX panelists. Now, typically, when you're doing your design defense, you're going to be given a few minutes, five, maybe 10 minutes to kind of get your feet out from underneath of you and get through the executive briefing before the panelists start peppering you with questions. And as I talk about in the workshop all the time, the panelists asking you questions, think of it as free throws within a basketball game. It's an opportunity for you to score points. So you have to be able to context switch back and forth from one question to the next that the panelists will be asking you because they might not always be on one topic at any given time. You might get a networking question mixed in with a BCDR question, mixed in with a performance question, mixed in with a security question, and so on. And so you need to have a way to be able to quickly context switch within your presentation. And this index slide that you see should be able to help you do that. And one of the things that you want to do, and this is really the next part of this tip, which is to get comfortable with the hotkeys within PowerPoint so that you can flip back and forth uh, between your slides as quickly as possible. Because again, you're working against the clock. The faster that you can switch to the slides that you have prepared that might answer the question that the panelist has asked you, the more opportunities you're going to have to shoot free throws or answer questions. 
Tip number three is to make sure that any diagrams that you included inside of your design documentation become slides within your PowerPoint presentation. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to actually show the panelists every single diagram, but pictures speak a thousand words. So if you get a question on BCDR and you have a diagram that shows how you set up SRM, for example, between two data centers, and you can quickly switch to that slide to bring the picture up on the screen, that will help the panelists be able to visualize the design decisions that you made as you answer their questions. The fourth tip that I have for you is to actually prepare about 25 minutes worth of actual content in your PowerPoint presentation. Now, what I mean by that is that you should be able to start and finish as you're practicing your PowerPoint presentation, the prepared content that you have in about 25 minutes if you are not interrupted. You wanna use the blueprint as your guide for what content you should be including, but certainly you wanna be able to go over the executive summary, the why of the project or the why of the design, as well as the key requirements, the key constraints, and the key risks that you faced as you were working through this design. In addition to including the overall conceptual, logical, and physical design for the core components within the design. Now this content should allow you to be able to practice and get familiar with those slides so that as you do get interrupted by the VCDX panelists, you go through it as much as possible. And that's gonna be tip number five. If a panelist asks you a question about networking, when maybe you have a slide up about your storage layer, skip context, move right into the networking side. Again, you're trying to leverage the 75 minutes that you have for your design defense as best as possible to give you an opportunity to score as many points with the panelists as possible. So as they're going through and scoring you against the rubric, they're covering the topics maybe that they feel that they thought you were weak on, that they had questions about when they pre-reviewed your design prior to getting to the design defense day itself. So now let's get into my slides themselves. I'm gonna walk you through the actual presentation that I used rather quickly. Now this was for an internal project when I was on the VMware OneCloud internal architecture team, and it was based on VMware's integrated OpenStack. So let's just dive right in. And so what I did was I quickly started out with an executive summary where I summarized basically why the project came to fruition and why I was challenged with creating this new reference architecture to be able to showcase VMware integrated OpenStack. From there, I moved into the high level requirements. Now my design had hundreds of requirements, dozens of constraints, dozens of risks. And the panelists will be familiar with those things because they will have read your design prior to your design defense itself. But from a presentation perspective, you wanna make sure that you kind of highlight the most critical requirements um, that you had for the design. And so I highlighted those um, five uh, design requirements here. Now from there, I immediately moved into what the conceptual design looked like at the time for VIO or VMware Integrated OpenStack and how that was going to layer on top of, uh, of my SDDC platform. Okay, and then from the conceptual design, then I moved into the logical design. Again, these were diagrams that were in my documentation that I submitted as part of my VCDX packet. And so I made sure to include those inside of my design presentation. Now, this next part I will say is something that I personally chose to do. I've not seen many other candidates do it, but it was something that I was conscious of as I was preparing for my presentation. And that was to actually highlight what I felt were the design weaknesses that my design had, especially when compared with the blueprint for the VCDX DCV track. So I highlighted what I felt were those design weaknesses because I anticipated that those were areas that the panelists were going to have questions about. And so I wanted to make sure that I attacked those things head on. Now, again, when it comes to your presentation and creating your slides, you want to do what you are most comfortable with. I'm very much a just attack it head on type of person. And so that's what I did here. 
So I highlighted the three areas where I felt my design was weak, and then I actually created slides and went through each one of those where I felt the weakness was, and I also added um, context around what I would have done if the requirements for the design had been different to allow me to address these weaknesses. So I covered recoverability, and then I went, or uh, sorry, yeah, recoverability, I went more into recoverability as well from a global perspective. And then I talked about what I felt was the manageability weaknesses within the environment, highlighted those, okay, as well. And then I went into the security side of things as well and covered those. And this was something that, again, I felt was important for my personal design defense. You can look at this and say, no, it's not really something I want to do. I always encourage candidates, though, that as you're preparing for your presentation to make sure that you've looked at the blueprint one final time and you've at least anticipated areas where you think you're going to get questions on whether you think you're actually weak in those areas or not so that you can be prepared for the presentation as well. Again, here's the index slide. So I quickly had this as my, my ability to be able to quickly bounce back and forth between all of my slides. And the other thing that I did here is you see some of these other slides that I was going to talk through was if you see in the bottom right corner that index, okay, that little index hyperlink, that when I would click on that, that would take me back to my index slide. Again, being able to context switch within the, the design defense itself in those 75 minutes is going to be crucial for you. So then as I worked through the final part of my prepared presentation, I wanted to highlight what I did from a workload capacity analysis, how I determined how many nodes I was going to need, the hardware platform. Again, these were charts that were all inside of my design documentation itself. And so I made sure to include those here. Then I went and looked at it from a physical rack design, how large the environment was going to be. Again, you can see that not these, these designs do not need to be massive, thousands of nodes, 10,000s of virtual machines. They can be relatively small. You can see here, mine was really about two and a half racks by the time I'd actually gotten to the VCDX uh, design defense itself from the time that I'd actually finished the project and it had scaled out. From there, I, I went through the storage logical design. Okay, I talked about storage policies because this was a vSAN environment. This was also back in the very early days of VMware Cloud Foundation 1.x. Okay. And so part of my job was actually to leverage VCF. I was one of the design partners uh, internally that helped review the architecture that eventually became what is today VCF. I went through the physical network logical design as well as the management core Okay, and then you can see here, now I start to get into some of those NSX components that I had at the time for both the management and the workload network side of things. Okay, and then I also had a, a diagram. This one, I will say on a slide, didn't look great. Okay, so another thing that you can do in preparing for your design defense itself is this was a Visio diagram that I had so I made sure that I exported it to a PDF file where I could bring it up on the screen if I needed to, okay, and actually zoom in more closely from an end-to-end -end network connectivity perspective. So you can see all the way from the internet all the way down through the core network into the NSXV layers all the way down to the ESXi hosts and the VMs themselves. And so one of the things that we always talk about doing is making sure that you have a USB stick and a backup USB stick, and you can put supporting files on there, things like network diagrams that might not scale well within a PowerPoint slide itself. Okay, and then I talked about the virtual infrastructure and how those things were going to be laid out, okay, as well as how the OpenStack DVS logical design looked like. This was a core component of my design. And then the last slide that I had prepared as part of my, my pre-talk track um, was really around the OpenStack management uh, side of things and what all of the components were that were, were required for that. And then from there, I moved into a series of reference slides. And these reference slides were obviously all linked back on that index slide to be able to anticipate questions. 
And so I had probably about, I had more reference slides than I actually did for slides that I planned on talking about as part of my, uh, my, my pre-configured or, or pre-done talk track. So some examples, okay? Again, your mileage may vary based on your design and what track you're going through, but I had how I set things up from a VM kernel interface perspective, performance data that I had gathered as I went through and tested the different storage policies. I had what the management core VDS looked like as well as the workload core VDS with all of the different VLANs and so forth that were going to be required for it. I talked about how I had set up network IO control, all of my HA and DRS configuration settings for both the management and the workload core. I talked about the different virtual appliance specifications that were going to be deployed inside of this, as well as resource pools and what I was setting all of the shares and everything uh, to. I also had a software bomb slide where I talked about all of the versions that I was using. Again, you can see this was back in 2017. So it was based off of vSphere 6 at the time. Okay, I talked about the SLA targets that I had and what that actually translated to um, from a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly perspective. Um, I also talked about how we were leveraging uh, vRealize Log Insight, vRealize Operations. I had a diagram for how we're doing capacity analysis within the environment, um, as well as additional dashboards that were there from an OpenStack perspective as well, to be able to give us that complete view into the environment. I talked really about briefly about what the operational, uh, if you realize operations, logical design looked up, looked like as well as the logical backup for the appliance and so forth. And that was really it. This is what I included in my PowerPoint presentation. So as I wrap up this video, the thing that I really want to get across to you is that there are some things that you should definitely be doing, and that's those tips that I included at the beginning of the video. So go back and reference that as you're preparing for your VCDX design defense and creating your slides in your PowerPoint presentation. The second part that I wanted to be able to highlight to you is that everyone's presentation and PowerPoint slides themselves are going to differ from one slide to the next. There's no right or wrong answer. I had about 41 slides worth of content, including all of the reference slides. Others I know have come forth and they've had hundreds of slides prepared. Do you need hundreds of slides? I don't know. I didn't. I felt comfortable with what I had. And that's really the most critical thing is when you're preparing your presentation, make sure that you are comfortable with the content you've created. Be comfortable talking through it. And again and again, I say this over and over again. But go back to the blueprint. Just as you went back to the blueprint while you were writing out your design documentation, go back to the blueprint as you're preparing your PowerPoint presentation. Make sure you've covered those key aspects of the blueprint, okay? And also make sure that you work through where you think your design might be weak. Try and anticipate questions that you think you'll get from the panelists so that you can be prepared for it. Use the, the, the 75 minutes of time that you have to the best of your ability. I hope you found this video useful as you prepare to get your VCDX certification in 2023. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel where I talk more about the VCDX certification, about enterprise architecture in general, especially as it relates to multi-cloud, as well as Kubernetes and cloud native technologies. Please like and leave comments below. And if you have more questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, at Chris Mutchler. I love talking about the VCDX certification and are more than happy to meet with you individually as candidates. Make sure you check out the vcdx.vmware.com site, look at the calendar, and find an upcoming workshop where I talk about more of this uh, in the program itself over a longer period of time. Until next time, thank you.